the United States of America is often called the greatest democracy in the world. That implies that basically the people are in power. Is this really the case? The cartoon I have brought for you seems to agree with this. You can see an alien who asks a woman to take him to the leader of the United States. The woman replies in a self-confident way that she is responsible for her country since she is heading to an election station. The cartoonist conveys the message that all citizens rule the nation temporarily because they reinforce their interests and ideas by voting their favorite government. But this thesis is very vague. The cartoonist portrays the US as a direct democracy in which the people vote for the president directly, like for example in some cantons of Switzerland. The United States, however, is a presidential democracy in which the people vote for a block of electors who ultimately vote for the president. So let's focus on the process of presidential election first. Presidential candidates are required to be at least 35 years old. Furthermore, they have to be born in the US and they need to be US residents for 14 years. Ideal candidates are also expected to have experience in politics, like Hillary Clinton, to listen to the people and to be tolerant, consistent in their politics, reasonable and believable. If the candidates meet these requirements, they travel to many states in order to introduce themselves to the voters and to convince their party. In each state, voters select the best candidate either in a primary or a caucus. In a primary, either party members or a political alliance decide on their favorite candidate secretly. This narrows the field of candidates. In a caucus, voters discuss their own choice in public town halls. In a next step, each party holds a national convention to officially nominate its candidate for the president and vice president. These candidates are voted by delegates from the states. After that, the presidential nominees and their running mates conduct a campaign throughout the country. They try to win the support of the general population. This sometimes leads to a fierce fight between the two presidential nominees. Especially the recent presidential campaign of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton concentrated more on casting a bad light on the opponent than defending their own agendas. Since both of them were considered the most unpopular nominees of all time, they used the strategy, the other one is even worse. The two competitors also discussed their agendas in three debates on TV debating topics like economy, healthcare, immigration and social issues. Apart from that, they are also confronted with personal scandals like Clinton's email affair or Trump's attacks on women. The next step is the general election. Like I mentioned before with respect to the cartoon, registered citizens vote for a block of electors in each state. All electors in one state vote for the same candidate. If you remember, we analyzed a map displaying the Democratic and Republican states. The middle of the USA was Republican, the sides were Democratic. These West Coast and East Coast states have a larger population than the quiet rural states in the middle. And thus, they get a bigger number of electors. Therefore, Clinton was expected to win. The candidate who gets more than half of the 538 electors votes, that means 270, will win. Also Clinton had won the popular vote, more electors voted for Trump. Finally, the newly elected president and vice president are inaugurated. Now I will explain you the separation of powers so you can see if the POTUS is really the most powerful man in the world, as he is often called. An important term you need to keep in mind is checks and balances. Separation of power into a legislative 
executive and judicial branch is reinforced by mechanisms of mutual control. Any of these branches is prevented from becoming too powerful. The President of the United States has an executive role. The Congress is the legislative, voted by the people, and the judicial is called the Supreme Court of the United States. They all depend from each other. The House of Representatives, one chamber of the Congress, represents the states in size, and each state has two senators. These legislative bodies suggest laws and administrate budgets, but the judicial, nine judges serving for life, can declare laws unconstitutional. The president either signs laws or vetoes decisions of the Congress. The Congress can impeach the president if he is not trustworthy anymore. The Supreme Court can declare the president's orders unconstitutional so the president is restricted in his decisions by both legislative and judicial. On the other hand, the president chooses the Supreme Court judges and the administration. He is the chief diplomat, he represents the US among other nations and the commander-in-chief of the US military. But again, the Congress has to ratify any treaties with other countries and troop deployments first. At first glance, one can see that the President of the United States cannot be called the most powerful leader in the world because his major decisions have to be approved by legislative and judicial. An even starker restriction in his power describes the term lame duck. This means that the Congress is predominantly Republican and the POTUS Democratic or vice versa. That was the reason why Democratic Barack Obama wasn't able to accomplish the aims of his agenda because he missed the support of the Congress. At last, I would like to tell you some major differences between the political system of the US and that of other democracies like Germany's. First, the separation of power between the legislative and the executive is bigger than in Germany since the Bundestag and Bundesrat and the Bundeskanzler cooperate better. Secondly, only two main parties are dominant. The Democrats are rather left-wing and liberal, whereas the Republicans are rather right-wing and conservative. Germany, though, has a much more diverse spectrum of parties. Last but not least, the USA is infamous of exporting their political ideology to other countries. They are sometimes described as a world police, who impose the democratic values from the Bill of Rights to problematic countries like the Iraq, 